Is it? What was that, sir? Mm -hmm. what, what was that you just said? I said, no, nobody more anti-war than I am. Right, right. But all the same, if the women Chinese came and invaded New Zealand, as long as I could walk, I'd go up in the hills with a rifle. Uh -huh. So, um, what was the bravest thing you saw, you witnessed yourself? Well, I saw so many. The number that, the number that one that they see is nothing to do with one that actually earned it, that didn't get it. Yeah. You know, it was just a few lucky ones that got it. Yeah. Do any sort of come to mind that you could talk about? I saw some nasty things. I saw an officer there with his two eyes shot out. He had a bullet in one and out and out the other. <coughs> and he was trying to cry. And he had no eyes. Mm. I've seen Jacob. I saw Jacob at the breakout and uh, he was lying there and I said, Come on, mate. I said, keep going. I said, you're right. And he said, oh, I'm all right. And I looked at his leg run off up here. And uh, a mate of mine, his brother was um, shot up and he sat down beside him and he could take a foot. He wouldn't leave his brother. You know. I, I think every man that went through it, was brave, even including me. I was, I'm not scratching at that, but I, I, everybody that went in, but in that army, was a brave man. Yeah. But as I say, you're too damn tired and shell shocked to uh, realise just what was going on, you know? Did, did the fact that you were captured and made a prisoner, did, does that have an effect on you that brings on depression or anything that you feel like you've failed or uh, or do you just, are you glad you're out of it? Well it, uh, it, it broke my marriage up like it did with hundreds of others, right. it broke my marriage up and uh, of I was so uh, sorry, so sorry, but I've a bit of depression, of of similar treatment for depression. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that's partly brought on with living on your own here. Yeah. All the time. But uh, it's a hell of a shock at the time when you one minute you're a free man fighting, next minute you're, you're out of it. You've had it, you know. And it's hard to believe. It's very hard to believe. I guess also because in your case there were so many others taken at the same uh, time yes. as well. I mean, yes. everybody, everybody around you has been taken prisoner. Yeah, yes. Well, there's quite a lot of fighting going on before, and they came in with their tanks and one thing or another, and we fought them off. <coughs> But as I say, you can't fight tanks from bullet brains. Yeah. Some of the jackets, uh, one or two of them, another bad one from Great, and he got over and jumped in the, in the tank, dropped a grenade down the interstate. He got the DCM. You know, there's great reasons, no doubt about it. I could just look at myself and say, well, at least I never ran away. <laughs> That's one thing I wouldn't have done. Yeah. So once you've been captured and there's a whole group of you together that were all in the same battle, did you guys all talk about what happened and find out what, e what happened to each other and sort of um, dissect it and work out what went wrong and... Well, after we got back to Cairo, we did. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes, there was definitely a fair bit of going on back in Cairo. 
But, but when you were a prisoner in the camp, did, uh, did you do that then too, just to oh. just to reassure each other that it wasn't your fault or anything like that? Oh no, we didn't really. Yeah. No. Okay. No, we. Uh, <coughs> as I say, I, I got a book to another book was called about the effects of the war on the Jackets that came back and got married and tried to settle down and couldn't and yeah. some could not commit a suicide and yeah. a lot died of natural deaths and they got home. Heart trouble. <coughs> yeah, that's something that's not really talked about much, is it? This is a lovely book I had it here and I, <coughs> I lent it to somebody. Never got it back. But it's all about that. It certainly affected my mind. Okay. Yeah. Of course, I wasn't married when I went overseas. That was just the um, just the memories of it coming back that oh. brought, brought it on, or well. When I was married, I woke up in the middle of the night one night and my wife throat. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> Do you know what? I've heard that before from other veterans as well. Same thing. <laughs> one of them had a knife to his uh, yes. wife's throat, you know, when he woke up. And, God. Awful. <laughs> There's one of the... One of the heads of there would tell you, I'll just tell you what his name was now. He was a very brave man. And he came home and uh, we got married and he came home from somewhere and his wife was in bed with another joker and he killed him. Oh, that was... Uh Peter Arvateri, wasn't it? Oh, that's his shit. Yeah, spent the rest of his life in prison. Mm. I don't reckon that was there, you know. He'd been in the bad attacks and all sorts, you know. Mm. I don't reckon he should have. Yeah. Mind you, he was murdering prisoners in Italy. He was a bit of a psycho. Well... They deny it now, but it's true. Uh, one of the... The man that had it did shoot a few prisoners. Yeah. And he was the one who gave the order because he was in yeah, charge of the battalion. Would be the one. He, he um, one of one of his junior, well not junior, but medium officers. Um, I I was involved in an interview with him, and he actually said that Arwateri put out an order: we are not taking prisoners. Don't bring prisoners back. Shoot them. This to his whole battalion. Now this is this is in halfway through the Italy campaign, and. Um, he took some prisoners, this this officer. And they did agree to it on him. Right, yep. Mm. And and he, he took some prisoners, he was bringing them back, and Awateri pulled a gun on him and said, you shoot those prisoners or I shoot you, yes. sort of thing. Uh, yeah. And, you know, he's like, no, I'm not going to shoot them. And, and he just, Awateri backed down. But they were shooting the prisoners so yes, on his yeah. orders. It's just crazy. Uh, things like that. But that's what happens, isn't it? That things like that happen. Well, in the breakout, when we were, we all gathered at two o'clock in the morning and said, right, let's start. The man that had it with us, what was I going to say? Oh, they were, they were, we got our orders what we were to do. We were to go and catch up with our, our, our trucks and get out and get back to where we were in And, uh, one of the orders was take no prison. No prisoners and don't pick up any wounded. Right. So there were no prisoners taken. There was one prisoner taken, they were taken by the battalion. They would break no battalion. He was only a boy, and the Barry Jacker felt sorry for him. He had him his neck, he said, here, carry this, he said, and he took him out, and, they, and, he, and he got through, and he went back to the British lines, and they adopted him, and this. <laughs> no, Jacker, they, they kept him as a, a job boy, you know. Right. Anyway, they got notice from his quarters. They had to 
put him in and get him into a prison and get him in a car. And this Jim and Jack are cars, he didn't want to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the only prison I could in that. Uh, but the marriage would have been bad. I, I don't mind to know, in that break out, I was more scared of the marriage than I was of them. Because they were just managing everything in sight. Yeah. And I did a silly thing. I went out with a massive little bit of jersey on and a pair of shorts. And the bears were picking, sticking everything from the side. So. And some of us were And the Germans were. The Germans were. When they first come in, they reckon they'd see it, couldn't get away. They'd lie down and pretend to be dead. Yeah. And once you got past them, they'd jump up and shoot you from the back. So everything on the ground was bad it made me ten dollars. Everybody stick a bone on them. Yeah. The Maoris even beheaded one or two. Wow. The whole thing is that they reckon we went through a, a, a first aid post, a hospital. And uh, we murdered everybody in the hospital, which we didn't, you know. That's the that's story the Germans put on after the war. Right. That's uh, we murdered all the prisoners, all the uh, patients in this hospital. But it wasn't true in the moment. Okay. Well, that's interesting because I had heard that. Yeah. I had heard it, yeah. Um, but that's interesting that it never happened. It never happened. The Germans are not silly enough to put the hospital that close to the front line. They, they, uh, but they, uh, they were pretty good in band. As I say, they, they used to enjoy themselves. You know. They loved the band, you know. We were trained up very heavily on the band. They didn't use their hand over their voice training up the band. And we were very, we were very good at night attacks. The Germans hated them. I was always hated them, I was always, because the Irish were not up for much anyway, but the Germans hated the, uh, the banners. That's the only time I've ever seen a German run away okay. in that night attack. And they, because a lot of them were still asleep, and, uh, and a lot of them were in the truck, in their trucks asleep, and underneath the trucks, we just sick and bad, uh, hand grenades in the truck. And, What's his name? Uh, um, Charlie Upton. In the, in the breakout, a, a lot of the German officers ju jumped in a truck and took off. And Charlie Upton chased them. And he was uh, chucking grenades in the, in the truck and he got the whole lot. All German officers got the whole of the lot. Wow. I've heard that when the Maori Battalion went into the attack, they'd make a lot of noise. Oh, that's what frightened me. Gee, they were mixed up with them. And they were harkering and yelling and screaming. Mind you, we all did a bit of that. We did a bit of it. We all did a bit of Okay. But, uh, they, oh, no, they no, yelled and screaming. And I was, I was pleased to see the end of the bit of Maori. <laughs> No, they they could they could fight us. They say what they like, but they guess they only had one one thing against you really. If you sent them in on an attack, they never went to assault. Now, if you do so a little bit well, then they just say, "Well, car here I come," you know. <laughs> And you, you to, they get into trouble, we'd have to go and get them out. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, something else that I've been told about in the desert is when you're moving up to the line, not, not in the line, but moving up, I heard that quite often the Kiwis would take a rugby ball and they'd be kicking it about. Absolutely. Is that right? We always took a rugby ball. Wow. 
So you'd just sort of be kicking it ahead of you, or would you be passing it round? Well, you've heard about the one the first war, haven't you? Oh, the, uh, the, the, the truce. The what? The, the Christmas truce, or? No, it's oh. a, no, there's other times there. Okay. There's other times they kicked the football. Uh, the, the officers would kick the football, and the crowd would tear in with the blah, 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 and kick the football as they went. Right. And uh, that's where the idea came from, I think. Okay. But anyway, we used to, when we went up in the desert, we always took a football with us and in their spare time we'd be kicking around. Yeah. And when you say football, this would be a rugby ball? Yeah, rugby ball. Yeah. And There's the one in the first war is in the museum in England, the ball they kick around there. Oh, right. Because mm -hmm. there were quite a few All Blacks in the division, weren't there? I think. One Jack, one Jack, what was his name? The one of our best old blacks. What the devil was his name? He was a great runner. Anyway, he was, he was one of our, our best ones. He was in the same outfit as I was. And uh, he got shot through both ankles. <laughs> That's the end of his football. Yeah. I was in the... Um, I was in the, um, what do you call it, the, um, what oh, things go out of my mind a bit there. What's the word, um, when you get wounded you go into a... Oh, like an aid post type thing? Yeah, he was in there and he was in there and uh, I saw him in there with his two legs, two sh shots through his two ankles. Oh, right. Wow. Yes, there were some quite good football. In fact, it's, as soon as the war ended, they sent the crowd straight to England, didn't they? Yes. Mm. Yep. And they it, did very well. Yeah, and even before then, they were playing in Italy. Mm. Yeah, because mm. uh, my my uncle actually played for them once yes. uh, as a substitute because the, I think the halfback couldn't play, so they, they brought him in and they played Italy. We played in the uh, as prisoners. Oh yeah. After we stuck in the Red Cross bus, wasn't it? And we got a bit of condition. Well, we played football. We played against the South Africans. Uh, there was a mate of mine, and he was a winger, and uh, Dickerson was a footballer. Uh, he was on the loose in Greece, and he got. He was on the loose in Greece, living with the Greek people. And anyway, they, they, they organised themselves and decided to see if they could get into Turkey. And they were almost got there and they got captured. Right. And the um, Germans got them all together and tortured them and to find out who would be looking after them in the most of Greek because they were shooting the Greeks that had nothing to do with it. Anyway, they got Bill, Bill Coochie's name on, and uh, they were torturing him and uh, giving him the dickens. Anyway, they uh, shipped him down to his socks. Anyway, in the end they could get nothing out of him, and they shoved him in the crimson cup. But what they didn't know was that in his socks he had a list of the, the addresses of the people he'd been living with. <laughs> <laughs> so he joined us up, joined up with us in Italy. Bill Kersey and another one, Doug Holden from Rotorua. Yeah. yeah, we played a bit of football over there. And, uh, oh, in some ways, when the Germans could see the war was over for them, they softened up a lot, you know, and started working with us a bit, you know. Right. Mm. It was a bit. We, uh, but as, I'll tell you one thing, if it wasn't for the Red Cross, there would have been very few prisoners who would have come out of Europe. Yeah. Very few, if any. 
Yeah, they were amazing, weren't they? The Red Cross. Red. New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, England. These parcels. We started off with half a parcel a week. And then when time for good, we get a parcel a week each. All right. And uh, we were a hell of a safe when we were captured. I think when I was in Bidgarzi, I think we were losing about 15 a day. Wow. With starvation and uh, yellow jaundice and desert swarms and dysentery and with everything. In the compound I was in, we were losing about 15 a day. Wow. And we would, when they finally took us out, they had to go ramp up onto the trucks to get us up on the trucks. <coughs> and uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, what did I do? <laughs> the whole thing for tough there. Jack has shot a scape and they shoot him on the wire and leave him there, for example, for the rest of you. Were there any particularly bad guards that everybody hated? Not particularly, mostly I ties. Right. I ties them. They were useless, but they mumbled as any time. Yeah. I got one jacker. When the Germans picked us up and took us up to Tripoli, they left the eye drive behind. They had been guarding to be taken prisoner. And one little eye drive guard, he came up to me and he said, will you give me a note, he said, to say that I've been good to the prisoners. He said, I'll give you a little tin of meat. And I said, OK. So he gave me a Pips on the paper and I wrote it, shoot this bugger. <laughs> and he had the minister to the meat, Master Crawford was one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he went off with a lot, he went off with a lot. Big smile on his face. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the Germans hated the Eyes and the Eyes hated the Germans. Yeah. In fact, there were times there when they would put on a, a combined attack, or the, or the Germans would send the eye drives in on attack and they would stand back. The eye drives would get out of it. As soon as they get out of it, up goes the white flag. And the Germans would have up on the eye drives. Yeah. Wow. They'd shoot the eye drives down with a little bit of Yeah. Right. I see eye drives. Most of the eye drives, when they left Italy, they included a great big white handkerchief in there. In the, in the gear. No, no intention of fighting, you know. Huh? Mm. Mind you, they're tanks. They had a brigade, they had the 19th uh, brigade, and uh, they were good in the tanks and the artillery, you know. We were take a step back and have a go at it. But when it came to hand to hand stuff, you know. Yeah. But, you know They used to, uh, <coughs> the eye drives were in, in, uh, in there, and, uh, and the Italians would attack them, were sent to attack them. They put their white flags up and could be taken prisoner for the Aussies, you see. <coughs> the Aussies would get them, take their trousers off and their socks and boots, Paint them behind blue with stuff I used to use in the military. Paint them behind blue, send them back with a note saying, 
when we want more prisoners, more specimens than us. Well, <laughs> I tell you, you have to make your own fun in the bloody hall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we want, when we want more specimens than us. Well, Did, uh, did you or did any of your mates um, in your platoon have good luck charms or mascots or anything like that? Uh, I don't think so. Anything we had at all, any use of whatsoever, now as I got to sort of straight away. Yeah. Took everything off you, really good. Photos and everything. I had a, I had my watch, and I took the face out and put a uh, picture of my girlfriend in it. They took that. It's one of these things, in retrospect, I'm glad I was there, because I got home again. Yeah. But at the time, it was pretty good. But I got the feeling that no one's going to shoot me, you know. So after a while, I got, I got nearly killed so down often that I thought, well, no German's going to get me. So. Yeah. They actually did, they got me from prison. I got home again. Yeah. And you've made it to 100, so that's not bad. 101 in three weeks' time? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, there was something I was going to ask. Uh, oh, yeah. When you were in the battalion, uh, in the desert, what was the food situation like? Were you living on bully beef and that sort of thing, or? Well, we had our own uh, cooks cooking up in the desert. They used to make ovens out of the sand and uh, and, co and concrete. No, what do you call it? Uh, cement. Cement, yeah. Cement and sand. They make ovens and they used to cook bread and stuff like that. Right. Dish it out to us. And we'd get a hot meal down again, bully stew or something like that. Bit of tin stuff made into stew. Now the food wasn't so bad. Drink was the big thing. Yeah. At times you eat. It gets very cold in the desert at night. It gets very hot in the daytime. It gets very cold at night. Mm -hmm. You get a heavy dew. In the morning you get up and you start licking your blanket, you know. Get the dew off them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did, was it, I know that the British particularly uh, made sure that you guys stopped for tea. Were you what? Stopped for tea, so you, you were having an intake of tea. Were, were the Kiwis big tea drinkers? Every well? chance, every chance we got. We always carried, we used to, we made a little uh, thing to, that you could boil up on. And we used to make tea every chance we got. Practically in the middle of a battery, my company. Right. Mm. All right, okay. Yes. Oh, you, you can't beat that cup of tea. No milk, no sugar, but... Uh. And especially the jackets with a truck, they usually had a, quite a few tin stuff and all that sort of thing, you know, drinks and that sort of thing. A few beers. All oh, right, yeah. Uh. Yeah. I can't really think of anything else to ask you, Trevor. Um, um, what what time do you have to talk about going back? Oh, well, I've got no particular time, but... I was going to um, say, would you have time to... Uh, um, well, actually, Kay had mentioned that she's got the file, um, yeah, the computer file, and she was going to get it to me, so... She told me she did, she said... She sent the smaller one. The smaller one, she sent the smaller one, yeah. a copy of it, a copy of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, but she's got. Did she send to you or was it somebody else? No, it was me. Me. 